happened at Wimbledon. Packed house here at Rod Laver Arena. The roof is closed in clement weather right throughout Melbourne today. It's not necessarily the final that we thought we'd get. It's not necessarily the final that a lot of people hoped that they would get. But there are two incredible stories on offer here tonight for whoever wins. Now time to focus and enjoy the last moments of quiet, of silence, of introspection before entering the cauldron and hitting the wall of noise. Heartbeats quickening. It's one of the biggest stages in tennis and the final is just moments away. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Australian Open Women's Final here on Rod Laver Arena. Would you please welcome a two-time Grand Slam champion from Spain, Gabinia Muguruza. In her first Grand Slam final, would you please welcome from the United States, Sophia Kennan. Just walking onto this court tonight is the end of what has been a remarkable journey. Of course, hopefully the end will come successfully for her in a couple of hours' time. Gabinia all business as she came out. Sophia Cannon looked pretty relaxed in the tunnel. Peter Donegan with you in the commentary box alongside Louise Fleming. Luke, welcome to you. As I said, it's not the final a lot of people expected, but there are two great stories on offer here tonight. No, it's unbelievable, isn't it? I just feel uh, this match has really built up so much over the last 14 days. So many stories to this Australian Open. And there's what the weather is like outside. Thankfully, we don't have to worry about that. There's been a lot of rain today, a lot of welcome rain, 17 degrees, but the lid is on Rod Laver Arena. Eva Astaraki Mora is in the chair. And the players, uh, players just pause for the photograph. All right, just to remind you a couple of things about time. Four minutes warm up, one minute you need to be ready for play. 25 seconds, there are short rounds around. Hawkeye, so if you're on the challenge, please do it in a clear and timely manner. Any questions before we start? Who is going to choose? Uh, a and Z or E? Yvonne. Whoops. <laughs> it's A and Z. Receive. Sight? Okay, thank you. Well that done. toss went up just a little bit too straight. <laughs> but anyway, we've got the formalities over and done with, and now a chance for the players just to get used to the atmosphere, to feel the ball on the strings of the racket. Of the two, Lou, you would think that Garbinia is probably the one with the more chance of commanding the final from the word go. Yeah, you think so. If you look at the numbers, Pete, they're pretty much in favour of the big hitter. She's really just improved so much. It's been a marathon run, really, for Garbinia. This tournament came here not feeling great, went down six love in that first match, and uh, she's just improved, hit her absolute best straps when she beat Alina Svitolina. And uh, I think she's got to be the one that's going to come out here, try to dictate, try to be the aggressor. She has a bigger serve. She's got more power on that serve, so she is a, going to rely on that. She'll hit more winners. She hit 39 winners against Halep's 20. And the numbers just really stack up for Muguruza. But she's got to really come out here and really own this match because, of course, she's playing a, a young player that plays almost unemotionally. And she's like a brick wall. You have to break her down. She Three really minutes. will have to continue to play at the highest level and not allow those little gaps. She went down 5-3 in the second set against Halep, and that was just a dip in concentration. If she does that tonight, she may find herself in trouble. The roof closed, though, I think is going to favour Gabinia tonight. The 2016 French Open champion, the 2017 Wimbledon champion, she's had some tough times after that. 
She was very good against Burton's in the round of 16. Pavlia Chenkova was a solid performance. Halep was a battle, but she got there in the end. And she's in good form coming in here. And as Lou said, she withdrew from Hobart, lost the first set of the championship six love. If somebody had have come and tapped you on the shoulder and said, Garbinia will be in the final, I think you would have laughed in their face. No, absolutely. I did that match and uh, I think uh, that she was minutes away from almost walking off the court against Shelby Rogers there. I know she was extremely ill before she walked out and uh, I think she was extremely ill after that match, but uh, somehow she's improved throughout and really played some inspirational tennis, absolutely. What about this young woman at 21 years of age, all sorts of records being broken, like youngest in the final since Sharapova played Ivanovic here, they were both 20 years of age in 2008. I loved her composure the other day, Lou. I loved her grit against Ash Barty. She had the crowd against her naturally. She was down set points in both sets and yet still won in straight sets. No, she's amazing, isn't she, Sophia? Cannon. She was a child prodigy. We haven't seen her name that much, but gee, she's certainly been building just under the top headlines on the WTA Tour, and she's playing some unbelievable tennis, and I think lightning struck uh, just for her at the right moments against Ash Barty, much to the disappointment of many Australians, but I think she also won some hearts of some real tennis lovers out here, because she is a fighter. She's going to compete till the bitter end. There's no question about that. One minute. And the one thing that's been impressive about her has been her composure. She looked relaxed in the tunnel again tonight. Here's the head-to-head. -head. Now, this is interesting. This will be the best of three tie-break sets. Garbinia Muguruza won the toss and elected to receive. Their only meeting was in Beijing. It went to three sets. Kenan won at 6-2 in the third set, but she was down a break in that third set and won the set 6-2. Yeah, I don't think adversity even bothers uh, this young lady. There's no question about it. She is a fighter. She Sorry, likes to be seconds. aggressive. Her ability to stay extremely even throughout and compete and take, stay mentally tough is really her strength. Moments away from the first of the big sporting events that the sporting world will be watching. They've got the chance of feeling the tennis balls on their racket now. And it is so important to get off to a good start because nerves can come into play. We saw that Denara Safin is in the box tonight with Sophia Cannon. And we know what happened to Denara back in that final all those years ago, 2009, when she was hit by an attack of the nerves. So it's just a matter of controlling things as much as you can, but you're going to be nervous, just embrace it. Absolutely, she's a 21-year-old. This is all completely new territory. It's funny, after the match against Ash Barty, though, she said, I'm actually not surprised. She said, I, I dreamed about this, and in a way, I feel like she totally belongs on this court. So is the dream going to come true for a 21-year-old who's dreamt of this moment ever since she could hold a tennis racket. Present. Sophia Kenham will serve. Garbinia Muguruza looking for a third Grand Thank Slam you. title. The final in Melbourne in 2020. Hasn't got a bigger serve as her nine. opponent tonight, Sophia. Her fastest serve is around the 162 mark. Muguruza, 178. That's a shot Cannon used to great effect against Ash Barty the other she side. She certainly mm -hmm. did that backhand slice, and she'll be really looking to just see the movement here of Muguruza pretty early on. I think this is going to be a big part of tonight's match, too, is the returning ability. Just that. Got to get the high percentages of first serves in because both players return extremely well, and that's something we'll look 
from Muguruza. She'll want to step in and really dictate from this first shot. A little luck always comes in handy in the final. She got there in plenty of time. It's a different situation, too, when your opponent pulls you into the net. We know Muguruza loves coming forward. She'll convert a lot from the net, but it's a completely different situation when your opponent pulls you in, not off your own terms. Just the start the American was after. That'll settle the nerves down for everybody. And I think from the Spaniard, we'll see a fair amount of traffic directed into that forehand side of Cannon. The backhand side is where really Cannon does a lot more damage. She hits a lot more winners from that side. And on reverse, Muguruza is going to really come out here and be very aggressive off the forehand side. I'll really look at a couple of numbers here tonight. But the big one for me is how many times this player here, Muguruza, can she move forward? She came to the net 30 times against Halep, converted 20. So they're very high numbers. If they battle it out from the back, from the baseline, I have a feeling Cannon can get the number there. She's can much more consistent from the baseline. First serve percentage for Garbinia has Nothing. been okay, but it's dipped below 63 times in these championships against Fitolina Burtons and Halep. In fact, it was Pavlyuchenkova and Halep. Against Burtons, it was 67. That was the best of the championships so far. Well, she'd love to serve that number tonight. Yep. She may have to. coming up with already early on. Love well, she knows, that, she knows that Muguruza is a, a very good ball striker, likes that fast tempo, likes to stop in the baseline and dictate. It'll be interesting just to see how Gabinho approaches this. She's been the underdog in pretty much every match she's played tonight. I have a feeling she's thinking she's a little bit more top dog out here. Some people like that feeling of being the top dog, on. being hunted, and there are others who are more comfortable in being the underdog. Yeah. This part of her game has really improved. I like what she's doing. Conchita has done a terrific job. That ball toss is a little higher, and she's not falling into the net too far. And she's six foot tall, so she gets a great range off that Crazy. serve, so she can find the corners of the boxes. And when she gets that first serve, is she is in control of the rally. You see a lot of this. Good serving and moving in, looking for that drive volley. There's no backward step for here for Muguruza. Again, she'll just want to feel this dominance. Look at this backhand drive volley. Perfectly struck. Great point there of the contact. Beautiful inside the court. So dominant. That's a really yeah. solid hold from the Spaniard. Down love 30. She reels off four points in a row. And like her opponent, settles the nerves down a little bit.
the world's media at courtside. Yeah, I really want to look at the numbers, Pete, throughout this match, just who wins those baseline Keeping rallies, because Cannon throughout this tournament has been very consistent. She's been able to really control a lot more often from the baseline. Muguruza, not so. She was winning 44% against Halep. Different style player, but the numbers will certainly match up a little. Well, I'll tell you what she's winning from the baseline at the moment, Lou. Zero. Yeah. None of four Muguruza so far. Yeah, she won't want to entertain too much of that. Again, the forehand side, that's the side she's really got to attack. If she's going to try to get Cannon into a defensive position. Certainly just... Feeling the situation out here now. Different conditions and a different style of match when they last played in Beijing. Magurusa is into the call on the left by side. The ball was called in. A little murmur from the crowd, and that prompted Garbinia, and also what her eyes told her. These can often be deceptive, oh. but she was right. 15, 15. The perception there from Garbinia. jail there she's just not as efficient as her opponent cannon at the net you could just see they're not really getting this ball to spread the court or to go anywhere that's really a dominant position just got very lucky Not liking that, Muguruza. 40, 40. She's not comfortable with that ball slicing and not coming up to a nice point where she would like to contact it, which is around the hip high. Rather unusual service action. Look at this. She doesn't even look at the ball until now. Nice, easy swing from there, though. Clever. Back in behind the movement there of Cannon. Loves playing that ball down the line, Mulrutha. We'll see that tonight as she just starts to get a little bit more confident with her ground strokes. This has been part of Garbinia's strength throughout these championships. Her return of serve game, she's broken her opponent at least four times every match. And she comes up with the opportunity of doing that here. It's the first big moment of the final, a break point in favour of the Spaniard.
How about that? She's 21 years of age. The way she played the big points against Barty the other day was exemplary, and she's not going to take a backward step tonight by the look of it. Catches the line. Wow, that's going to give us some confidence there. Just turns this game back around. Incredible point there. Pretty happy as well. <laughs> she plays without fear. Yeah, it almost looks like the hat just curves around her eyes, Cannon. And, uh, just looks like she's almost got blinkers on there. She's unaware of what's really happening outside of the court. Terrific focus. Oh, it's just a ball change, a tempo change, rhythm yes. change. Cannon was expecting that to come through with a little bit more pace of shot. Didn't really give this a real nudge. Muguruza got lucky there. Bit of an opportunity for Cannon. a perfectly played uh, point Benton. sets that up incredibly well again just not 100 confident in that middle part of the court not a great transitional player sophia cannon look at that she's also always from that center part of the court looking to take that ball off the back end so that's a certainly It's a real pointer, though, for Margarita. Yes. Under pressure, she'll want to go back in with a little bit of width. She wants to get Cannon moving. She does not want to let her really stay comfortable through the middle of the court there. Just look at the way she pushes herself, this young lady. the danger as soon as that second serve comes in she is under threat incredibly so though she has a faster second serve average than her opponent cannon's second serve on average is better than gabinier's the break comes and it comes early the Spaniard has it. She's in a position now where she can command the first set. Magarutha, 2-1 up after a quarter of an hour. Well, that's what we were talking about, Lou. Her ability in all likelihood to be able to potentially command the situation early, and now she's got the exact opportunity to do just that. Yeah, and it's dangerous when Gabinier gets confidence because she's a good ball striker. She, I think she likes to be a front runner. I think she likes to dominate. And uh, yeah, it's not good for Sophia Cannon to be broken so quickly because that's just going to really relax Gabinier now. When she comes out and serves, she's going to be feeling very good about this. It's interesting, though, just Thank how you, well they've please. both Thank served. You, but. Uh, I find it hard to believe that Gabinia Muguruza's second serve just isn't quite Time. as fast as her opponents and have served. And certainly that is where they're both trying to really expose off that second serve. Interesting pre-match assessment from win predictors. 65-35 in favour of Kennan. 
you wouldn't really have to search too hard to find a lot of people who would have had it exactly the other way around. And it's Mugarutha who's made the early running, serving with the break. Mugurusa is into the call on the left near sideline. The ball was called out. No sign of either Azdaraki Moore overruling the call there. The chair umpire gets a good look at this. 15 love. And she could have overruled it. So everything going the way of the Spaniard early on. Just not moving there, Canon Conchita Martinez. They just started uh, a couple of months ago. They did pre-season together in California, and gee, things are looking very good for Gabinye. Lost first round at Wimbledon last year in 2019. Lost first round of the US Open. So a massive turnaround here at the Australian Open. Much of that has been uh, in part the work, the confidence that's come from Conchita. Well, it certainly worked the last time they were together because Conchita yeah. was calling the shots when Gabinia won Wimbledon. I'd wonder why you wouldn't keep someone in your box when you win a Grand Slam. Two in the game. She hasn't served more than two double faults in four of the matches she's had so far in these championships. Finals nerves can do that to you. So good from that middle part of the court. That's why she's so dangerous. Six foot tall Four against that meters. angle. Likes to use the width on her serve. You'll see that pattern of play very often. Push your opponent wide, particularly if you can get the racket face open. You're going to get something a little passive through the middle of the court. She'll just keep playing that. And she's hit the line again. Yes. There's no indecision when the ball comes through the middle of the court from Cannon. She'll always twist the shoulders and look for that backhand. almost a Conchita Martinez moon ball in the middle of that rally. wasn't easy Game for the Spaniard, but she got what she was after, consolidates the break and leads 3-1.
Magudus Halids. Yeah, she's a powerful striker. Well, both young ladies are fantastic from the baseline. That's uh, really their strength as well. But the reason why Muguruza is just overpowering her opponent uh, at the moment, I think it's the combination of the positioning and the fact that she can really step in and take time away from Kennan. And she's also getting a lot of returns Fifteen. back into play. Her numbers in that area, Muguruza, have been very high throughout these championships. She got it up as high as 84. That's incredible. And tonight it's even better so far. She'll start looking for that too. It's all about reading the racket face, reading your opponent, and just seeing how Cannon just lifts the racket face here. Doesn't quite have the same disguise once you've seen it a few times. And Muguruza was actually sitting on the baseline, so she didn't have that much ground to cover to get there. She's got there a couple of times quite comfortably. Does it cause a rethink in the Cannon game plan? Let's she surface. was very quick to get up then if she was sitting on that baseline to get to that one. <laughs> Sorry, Pete. <laughs> yeah, terrific depth. Sophia was nearly she sitting on the baseline her then. Herself. With the Angie Kerber squat shot. That's true. Just so confident at the moment. Muguruza. Well, I'm just surprised that Kennan is very Thank comfortable you. just going back on that diagonal, going back into the forehand side of Muguruza. Both players just baiting each other, just waiting. But the depth is just stopping them from really taking that one down the line. Some really good quality tennis. Just long. 14 mm -hmm. It's really interesting to watch Cannon when she serves. This is a, another good rally here. You can see Cannon just trying to press inside that baseline as well and do the same back to her opponent. But just the stance. There's dad, Alexander Cannon, will be very happy with his daughter. She just continues to hit the lines. That's a big hold from Sophia Cannon with her back to the wall. The damage may have already been done, though. Muguruza up the break, leads 3-2. Well, she's working really hard, isn't she? I feel she's under a lot of pressure, though, on the returns. Muguruza just completely loves to stand inside that court, really own that, that part of uh, her game where she can really step in and just relax and go for it. I almost feel like Gabinia is enjoying the returning games a little bit more. We saw the two double faults in her, her own service game in the last game. How she just turns around and comes back out in this one. But good intensity Sophie, there from Sophia. Thank you. I think very happy to hold the time.
It wasn't that long ago that Garbinia Mugarutha stood there and stared at a mountain that was 19,341 feet high. Tonight, the mountain in front of her is five feet seven. <laughs> And I'm talking of Gabinia climbing 59. Mount Kilimanjaro in the off-season, Africa's highest peak. And she described it as a surreal experience. And when she gets out on a tennis court, anything by comparison must seem relatively comfortable. Probably a lot more oxygen down here in Rod, yeah. Rod Laver Arena as well. Perhaps not when she walked on, though, for a <laughs> Grand Slam final. It might have taken a little while for that oxygen to get into her lungs, but she's done a good job of that. She's done a good job of most things so far. Just the fourth winner that Sophia's been able to manufacture. Her opponents had double that and then some. Nine. where the consistency of everything that this young lady does mentality attitude the way she approaches everything is so solid doesn't like to change things up Three shots in the rally, and it was brilliant from both players. 40, 50. Yeah, just trying to find a way to move forwards here. Gabinye, end range, racket face open. Oh, it doesn't really give a lot on this one, but I think the legs were almost done after 23 shots. For service. Let for service.
Brilliant. That one's not easy. Got up high. She doesn't have yes. the most wonderfully manufactured forehand, but the consistency is, uh, again, quite solid. Up high, most difficult shot is completely out of range there for Cannon. Good effort here from Muguruza, just taking time here, wants to reset, gone to the, has gone to her towel, going through her routines just to settle things down. Well, there's been some heavy hitting with these balls. They're 32 minutes old. We know that they fluff up towards the end of their life and they've still got a little bit of life left in them. You're not getting a high percentage of first serves in there, Galbinier. I wonder how important that hole might turn out to be in the context of the match. That 30 all point might turn out to be critical. Yeah, it's pretty special, isn't it? When that first serve goes in, it just looks like business is so easy for Gabinye. Again, this is just a wonderful shot. The drive volley off the backhand, she looks so efficient off that. Perfectly struck. Just no time for Cannon to be anywhere near that ball when you get that first serve and first strike in. So this is a danger game for Cannon because this is the last game with the old balls. And sometimes they can get a little hard to control. Forehand, just not necessarily like the way she manufactures that forehand. Much more compact, her opponent gets the chest side, Cannon's racket face. And again, that luck that Garbinia is riding is on her side. And now the 21 year old is staring at a big problem. And now it's an even bigger problem. Love These are essentially set points, you would think. And that's what she does on the big points. Well, she needed to do that, didn't she? And just looks so nice, so simple. Such a much uh, better manufactured shot than the forehand cannon. <laughs> Got lucky. If you look at the two different forehands, one is very flat at contact. Cannon, the racket face, faces to the back of the fence. Takes a long time to get that racket back up and squared on to contact point. That's the reason why it breaks down a little. It was perilously close to over the baseline. Muguruza has a little look at it. That is a huge point yes. for Kennan to be able to hang on to, though, because if she can just somehow scrap herself to a hold here, this set is still alive. If she goes down a double break, it's effectively over.
And now she's going to have to see off a fourth. Well, she's continually just brought so much pressure tonight, Muguruza. Great angles. How tough is she when the crunch is called yes. on hot? Yeah, I think she's had, she's got a tactic that she goes back to when things are not looking good. When she's really under pressure, he shall serve wide. She wants to draw this ball back onto the backhand side against Muguruza. And then she's got all sorts of options from that wing. She might just be able to scrap out a hole here. And what an achievement that would be. There's her agent, Hugo, there. At the bottom, you talk about consistency. He said to me yesterday, she wants to go to the same restaurant every night. She's had the same order every night, which is mozzarella pomodori and ravioli. No sweets, no sugar, no alcohol. And some players love to do that, Pete. Just missing yes. that one, and she's desperately angry at herself. But there's a lot of players that just love the routine, doing the same thing every day, same food, almost superstition-like. That's how much it means to just win every single point. She's so hungry, this young lady. And again, picks... A very good time to play that. She did that against Barty. We said the number of times she did it, but she did it on big points against Barty with great effect. She's got terrific awareness, hasn't she? She's got to rack her face away from her opponent, yet she can sense where Muguruza is on all occasions. She loves to dissect the court up and just get her in difficult positions. That is some hold. Four break points down. Sophia Cannon keeps the first set of the final alive. Muguruza, though, still up the break after 39 minutes. That's a huge hold. Yeah, it just shows the fighting qualities, isn't it, of Sophia Cannon. Gee, under pressure, but she knows what to do. In those moments, I feel like she's got some very strong set plays and she just goes to those things that she really trusts and that serve out wide and then drawing the ball back onto the backhand side time and time again. Got a little bit of bling. No doubt she'll have a little bit more of that after the Australian Open, but what a great fighting spirit this young lady has. Just 21 years of age and uh, certainly making a name for herself on the WTA Tour. 15 in the world and that's going up rather rapidly but I really like the way Kibinye Muguruza has also turned back at the very top of the WTA and I think she's going to have a, a fabulous 2020 no doubt about it underneath the roof at Rod Laver Arena on an inclement Saturday in Melbourne the 2020 Australian Open final Kibinye Muguruza trying to get her name on that famous trophy, the Daphne Ackhurst Memorial Trophy. Having to fight hard to maintain her advantage in this first set. 15, love. That's her third ace of the match. Certainly not the quickest, but the placement was perfect.
Well, she's usually in the driving seat when she gets that first serve in. And she can keep the short rallies going. Doesn't want to entertain the longer rallies here, Muguruza, on her own serve. Let's for service. We've already examined the dangers of the old balls. Now, what we're seeing here is seconds. the danger of the new balls. Sometimes you get yourself into a rhythm over 40 minutes and you get the new balls and they can fly on you and it's easy to overcook them over the baseline. Garbinia's done that twice now. Well, it's usually a real advantage, isn't it, to have for 15, brand new balls when you're serving, but not when you're just not feeling 100% confident on that first serve. And she really hasn't got a high number in tonight. Two break points. That was a big miss too. Game that was a game. very tight game from the Spaniard. And now Sophia Kennan has got momentum back Four on her game. side. No wonder Conchita has a somewhat worried look on her face all of a sudden. Yeah, we haven't really seen this throughout the tournament from Muguruza. So she certainly is looking a little worried when something new pops up. It's just finals pressure. Love mm -hmm. the way she's got to get her moving the Spaniard Love do you want to don't want to let Cannon just perch herself in a corner and just really dig deep and be solid and just use her fighting qualities you've got to get her on the run she's got to dictate Muguruza She's got a bit of attitude about it. We saw that in a couple of matches earlier this week, in particular against Barty the other day. She's perpetual motion, constant movement. That's better. She Just when she be. thought she was back in it. Yeah. She's got to be inside the court, Muguruza. That's where she's dangerous. And in fact, I'd like to see her just moving forwards more often. She's approached the net 13 times. She's been pulled in a couple of times by her opponent, but her conversion is up around the 70%. Good depth from Cannon.
Very aggressive from Muguruza. Kennan is beside herself with rage. She's let Muguruza get the advantage back again. And in a moment, she'll be serving for the first set in the final. Well, that's exactly the, the type of bravery that I think we've got to see from the Spaniard tonight. She's got to come out and be the dictator. She's got to really get that ball deep, look for opportunities to come forwards because that's where she's really getting some terrific conversions. 14 times she's come forward, she's converted 10. That's a, a huge number for her. And certainly when it comes down to baseline rallies, it becomes a lot more even. And then it really comes down to which side are we really going to target? We're going to really try to get Cannon moving. We try to get an end range, but certainly uh, she's doing a better job at the moment uh, of being the aggressor. Time. Muguruza. Three breaks have served to this point in the first set in the 2020 final. Two of them have gone the way of this young woman. And consequently, she's serving for the set. You wouldn't put it in the book just yet, though, after the service game we just saw. Yeah, you have to wonder how much debris is still lurking Love around them. in the mind of uh, Gabinia after playing a terrific game to break, then losing her own service game and just not feeling the timing off the first serve tonight. It's really disappeared for her over the last couple of games. And there's the difference when yeah. it goes in. She's winning 81% of points when the Good first game. serve hits the court. It's hugely different, isn't it? 166, she put that one in. She just pulled a little off, tried to measure herself. That's what she's got to do in this game. Go for broke. And again, great angle with the sliding serve going out wide. 13, 15. At 158 kilometres an hour. A much more confident service game. She's two points away from gaining a huge advantage. It's been a battle at times in this first set. We're 51 minutes into it. Muguruza was the first one to stamp her ascendancy on the final. And now she's got a real chance of doing it even more so. Set point. just didn't quite commit to keep moving forwards on that had cannon running that was the opportunity here just backed away got a little tentative on that shot of course the pressure mounting well surely she couldn't save another two set points <laughs> sophia cannon she did it twice the other day against ash barty Not this time. Muguruza is first on the board. It takes 52 minutes to break the deadlock, but the Spaniard halfway towards the trophy in Melbourne, 6 4 in the first set.
Well, it was a brave service game, really, there, wasn't it? You would have thought there was a, a fair amount of damage just rattling around in the brain there of Gabinye Muguruza after putting in a less than average serve to get broken prior to that. But the numbers are pretty good in terms of winners. I like that one, 15. The, the first serve percentage has just got to improve, no doubt, because when it goes in, the conversion is incredibly high. Good work from Cannon in that department. 17 unforced errors from Gabinia, and it just depends when they come. That's the big factor tonight. Both players have really had their moments off the ground. We love that from Ken and that backhand. She's got to really use it more often if she can. Love the way she sets up. And this has been a big part, again, for her game. Team Cannon love that one. That's a big shot that Muguruza just has to really own. She's got to try to come in as often as she can. She's come in 14 times, converted 10, really outdoing Kennan in that department. But look at that reaction. Come the third person only, male or female, to win their first three Grand Slams on three different surfaces. It's only ever been done twice before, and she's on the verge of doing it. There is the little matter of the currency that is associated with this match as well tonight. Not an insignificant amount of currency. The guaranteed $2.065 million Australian by being here tonight. And if you can make your way through and lift up the trophy at the end. 4.12 million Australian dollars goes with it. Well, that's just what Kennan had to do to have a commanding hold at the start of the second set to give her opponent the message, I'm not going away just yet. Well, it's amazing. I'm sure Sophia Kennan wasn't thinking about that amount of money that she'd be playing for. I first saw her when she was about a 16-year-old. Australian junior team played against uh, the US in Eastbourne. And Australian girls, we won that match. But Cannon was very disappointed. And about a couple of hours later, we'd driven to Wimbledon. And here was Sophia out the back with Dad, just pounding balls again. She has worked extremely hard to get here, this young lady. She knows what it's all about. Understandably, a big change in the win predictor after what happened at the end of that first set. Well, that one missed, Lou, but that's something she's got to do. That one came down mid-120s. She's got to attack the second serve. Absolutely. You know, it's in the back of uh, Muguruza's mind that she's not really owning her serve tonight. Huge difference. It's such a an easier point. She gets that first serve in, just has great height, good accuracy, good depth. Well, the return is just always something that's going to be right in the slot there for Muguruza.
Well, here's the number to back up what Louise Fleming was talking about. When the first Four serve's gone into play for the match, she's won all but four of those points. When the second serve's been required, she's lost all but five. There's the difference. It's a huge chasm between first and second serves and the productivity of them. Fires down ace number four for the match. Well, much better service game there from Muguruza, and why not? You can just feel she settled in a little bit more now after winning that very tight first set. You can just relax a little bit more, but she can't. She looks very tense, Conchita. And, uh, of course, she would be. Well, it's harder when you're on the sidelines sometimes, yeah, isn't it? Because at least when you're out there, you're in control of your own destiny. Of course, Conchita's been in this situation as well. She was a finalist here at the Australian Open. First ace of the match Excuse for the me. American. No. Muguruza has two challenges remaining. Well, that's a brilliantly constructed point. Dad would have been pretty happy with that one. Yeah, and you can see that Muguruza, she's not comfortable when she gets pushed back two or three metres behind, and that's just the depth and the depth and quality. That's some ball striking there from Cannon. That's where she's not comfortable. That's unfortunate for Muguruza because she had some really good moving there and very good defensive skills. That's a big part of the game that she's really improved as well. That movement and defensive skills. That is 12 straight points to the server so far in this second set. We're on serve. The young American, Sophia Kennan, with her nose in front at 2-1, but down by one set to love. Well, it's not necessarily new territory for Sophia Kennan, although she's only had to really fight one set down and that was against Coco Goff what a terrific match that was but was disappointed lost the first set 6-7 and then really rallied on won the next set 6-3 then 6 love just got better throughout but apart from that she has not dropped a set and she's one of the fittest young ladies on the tour so she is not going to be bothered at all if this is going to be one of the longest matches she ever plays she in fact would love to stand out here all night and play and win this match she's uh, such a fighter and of course we know the amount of time she spends on court training hard she's put the work in so she'll back herself physically here the american Nine times in the Open era has a player come back from dropping the first set in the Australian Open women's final and been able to win. Monica Sellis did it twice back in 91 against Jana Novotna, the late Jana Novotna, and in 1993 against Steffi Graf. All is not lost you, ladies and gentlemen. for Take Sophia seat, Cannon. Please. The players are ready. Muguruza now with the pressure of having to play catch-up in this second set. No points against the server in the second set. Oh. 
Now, one of the things that I really was looking forward to in this match, just to see who was going to be the one that really was going to own that danger zone, which is right around the baseline. And I just feel that Cannon has just pushed up a little bit more. She wants to take on Muguruza in her strength or the apartment that she's really owned tonight. So much easier to produce power from there. Good aggressive stuff. 15 on. Just we've got to see it more often, I think, from Muguruza, that extreme forehand grip, but sets herself really well. She opens the court up with a one cross court, sees the alley down the line, and look how well the racket faces out in front. She continues to take those little steps, not to let the ball drop. That's the key. Much more space to hit into. Well, she's only 21 years of age and it wasn't too long ago that she was coming out of juniors and we still see a little bit of that just a little bit of maturity that she's still working on she gets frustrated every now and then Cannon. What else wasn't that long ago was when she was a youngster. There's, there's Gladys Knight in the audience tonight. Gladys Knight and the Pips yeah. fame. I can't even tell you, Pete, but I sat next to this beautiful African-American woman the other day at a breakfast, and I happened to ask her, so we had a chat, and I said, so what do you do? <laughs> and as I said it, I knew exactly who I was sitting next to. And she loves her tennis. She does. What a gorgeous lady she is. Good power from Cannon. What I was going to say, Lou, was it wasn't that long ago that this young woman was getting a photo taken with Anna Kornikova, who was one of her heroes. As a youngster, it wasn't that long ago she had the bravado as a seven or eight year old to say that she could return anti erotic serve. And here she is on one of the biggest stages the sport's got to offer. Amazing. I quite like the answer when the reporter said, how would you do it? She said, well, I would just shorten my swing up on the forehand and and return the ball fast. <laughs> She returned that one fast. Mogarutha has floated it over the baseline. Cannon gets the first break of the second set. Well, just a subtle change here. You can feel Cannon it. Is. Cannon just pressing up. And I like what she's doing. Just a very intuitive young lady. Well, she doesn't panic. That was the impressive thing in her match, in particular against Ash Barty the other day. When things were against her, she kept a level head. Well, she reacts, but it, it's almost in a, an angry, positive way because the response is always so good after. It's almost like releasing that little bit of negativity. 
and then shifts it back. Just not allowing Muguruza to get set off her ground strokes, just pressing for time. A shift of intensity, too, from Cannon. It's really pumped up. Spectacular point that was. Well, no information here from Muguruza because doesn't do enough with this one, but then pulls her opponent in. This is where she likes to have Cannon because we know Cannon's not confident up at the net, so why not bring her forwards and then go over ahead? Terrific shot here, end range. Great. It's an awkward backhand slice from Cannon, but gee, it's effective. It's hard to read whether she's going to push that one long and get the depth or whether she's going to drop shot it on you. That is the ideal way to back up a break of serve. Sophia Cannon strikes purposefully towards the chair. And she has the advantage in the second set. Just the one break of serve. Cannon leads 4-1. Well, it's almost like she enjoys being under pressure, but I feel she let a little bit of, uh, I guess, the stress that she was perhaps feeling in that first set. She just lifted. She came out with the next, with another gear, really, in that second set. All the numbers have just gotten a little bit more positive for her, but I feel she's just moved up on that baseline, tried to just intimidate a little bit more Muguruza, not let her get set in her positions Hi. off the ground. She's just made her a lot more uncomfortable here. Take your seats, please. Thank you. Australia is open, says the sign. After the tragic events of the bushfires in recent times, the message coming from these championships and everybody in Australia is come and see us. Australia's open for business. That one missed by some way as well. This stage of the second set, Sophia Cannon, five winners, two unforced errors. This set has been going 21 minutes. She's taken it up to another level, and she had to.
Kotelab. Really needs a good service game here, Ruza, just to stop the run. The momentum really shifted to the American at the moment. You mentioned those nine players who've been able to come back from a set down on the Open era at the Australian Open. The last one to do it was Victoria Azarenka in 2013 against Lee Na. Good work. Four to the team. Just good footwork there, working hard. The winners really racking up there for the Spaniard, but just has a lot of unforced errors this last four or five games. She had some trouble yeah. with the ball toss, but when she eventually got it up there, it worked okay. Cannon leads, four games to two. Yes, Victoria Azarenka did it in 2013. Coincidentally, 2011 it was done by Kim Kleisters, and her opponent was also Lee Nair in that 2011 final. Caused some of the most joyful runner-up speeches that we've ever had at the Australian Open from Lee Nair. <laughs> Amazing, wasn't it? Staying the cannon needs time on that forehand. She's got a big swing, but that one there just not penetrating through hard enough to hurt Hannon. Some quality tennis, but coming out just on top there. Very open stance. Her first serve percentage has been exceptional all the way through these championships. She's got it up as high as 75, and she's in the 70s again tonight. 72% of first serves into play. And it's not that the serve is so big. What it does, though, when you're always getting the first serve in, you're putting pressure on the returner because it's just more tense when you're waiting for that first serve. As soon as the first serve's missed, you tend to relax. You're going to step in a little bit more, feel a lot more confident, and the pressure goes back onto the server. Just makes you hit one more ball. She absolutely does, and, and also awkwardly as well. What a get from Kennan here off the backhand. And Muguruza was looking to come forward to hit a dry volley, but she had to back up. This one was just coming from too high. And again, on the defence. Mm -hmm. 
she has a chat with herself when she feels she doesn't do quite the quality of what she's looking for. Got really high expectations of herself, Sophia. The young American has played an exemplary second set so far, and she's now just one game away from levelling up the 2020 final. It's 5 2. It's 5 2. Well, it's a little bit daunting when you're playing somebody like Sophia because the reactions that she gives are really positive and and it's very much like i i absolutely am fighting i absolutely believe this reaction here sends a very strong message back over to muguruza sometimes you see somebody win a game and they walk across the court like gosh i got out of jail but that message there just sends message to your opponent saying I am doing exactly what I want to be doing out here it's a very positive reaction the message is almost put a brick wall up in front of me if needs be I'll run through it yeah I'll do what it takes and she's doing that in the second set hope you're enjoying the 2020 final in Australia first big international sporting event of this year. Packed house at Rod Laver Arena. Gabinia Muguruza working her way to the first set in 52 minutes. Sophia Kennan, the 21-year-old from America, working her way back into it. Muguruza serving now to keep the second set going. The last thing she wants to do here is hand Cannon a break for one obvious reason that would mean that the match would be leveled up but it would also give the american the first serve in the third set and then garbinia would have the pressure that she's faced here in the second all over again absolutely she hasn't enjoyed serving second Just wide. Muguruza is heading to the ball on the right far side line. The ball was called out. Well, I think she's probably deep enough into the set where this is really a speculative challenge. Or did it get the line? It did. Ooh. 15, 13. She's annoyed with herself there because she gave her a free point and she gives very few of those. <laughs> Well, it was just 139. Got what it deserved, really, into her strength just off that left hip there. 
What a fight back by the 21-year-old. She's got the momentum on her side. The crowd stands at Rod Laver Arena. And the 2020 Australian Open final is going to a third and deciding set. Well, it just looks like nothing really bothers this young lady. In fact, she quite enjoys adversity. We've seen her over the tournament play her best tennis when she's under pressure. And tonight, she's just heard things around incredibly well. Look at the numbers here. Eight winners to eight. Now, that number was very much in favour of Gabun Gabinier in the first set. And uh, unforced errors. Just incredible. She's like playing against somebody who you just have to force the issue a little bit more every time and Muguruza is trying to do that but that's where the errors have just started to come up again not really coming into the net and taking advantage of that best part of her game Gabinye but she hasn't been able to because this young lady is really dominated from the first ball she has served better the depth has been better the backhand is now back the forehand well She's tried to really change up a little bit more often and just has looked so efficient from the ground. We didn't see enough of that from Gabinye where she's able to step in and really dictate play more often. And that's because we're not seeing her get enough first serves in. Just spectacular to see the backhand though. Much of the winners, we looked at the numbers there, eight winners from Cannon. And many of those coming from the backhand side. Oh, it's been a really enjoyable match, hasn't it? And certainly the Americans that are here would be loving to see their young player, just 21 years of age, really take the court and own it. Now there's some medical attention going on here with Gabinia Mukarutha. Trainer has just arrived out on the court. We haven't seen any perceptible signs of her being restricted at all. She wasn't feeling well at the start of the first week, so perhaps it may have something to do with that. Time. But perhaps what her opponent has been doing to her might also be contributing to the way she's feeling at the moment. One set apiece. Here's a number from that second set. Sophia Kennan had 19 Final service seven. points in that second set, and she won 16 of them. Kennan she was perfect seven. off second serves. This young woman gets the opportunity of serving first and putting the, all the pressure on the shoulders of the Spaniard, as she did in the set just gone. Again, the tactic is going to be really stay in inside the court. Try to expose the movement a little bit of Muguruza. Don't let get don't let her get set. A couple of loose ones. Unforced errors from Muguruza at the start, a little slump of the shoulders, a shake of the head. Three wild ones. Conchita will be scratching her head. Oh, she's had all the luck with the net cords tonight. That's about three dead ones she's had. Well, she absolutely needed something then, didn't she? This one barely has any space from the net and the bounce there, no chance.
Well, the only point that Muguruza yeah. could win in that game was from a dead let court. Lou, you've There's sat in the box. Like you know what this situation is like. Is what we've just seen from Garbinia cause for real concern for Conchita Martinez at the moment? Or well, are we a long way from the finish yet? No, I think we've seen throughout this tournament she played that first set, the very first match that she played against uh, Shelby Rogers, lost that six love, was able to turn things around. We know she can turn things around. And in fact, quite often, we'll see little moments where Muguruza just shifts off concentration and just fades away. There's still more in the tank from Muguruza. Just she's, right there. Yeah, she's got to go for her shots. Yeah, I, she's got to do that. She's got to come out here and be super aggressive here, Margaruth Muguruza. She was 5-3 down in the second set against Halep and pulled it back, really just lifted at the right time. Whether she can do it again tonight. That's more like it. I have a feeling that if she Very just lives the energy and, and really gets a little bit inspired here, the crowd will get right behind Muguruza. We saw when they walked out onto Rod Laver Arena. That she was very much uh, indeed athlete. The Australian loves uh, Gabinho. Probably they just haven't seen enough of Sophia Kennan. Kenan has two challenges remaining. A troublesome first game of this third and deciding set for Gabinia Muguruza. No such worries in the second game. And Pete, I, I think also we saw a very topsy turvy match in Beijing when they last played. Just mm the back end of the year, 6-love, 2-6, 6-2. Both capable of really just dropping their level a little bit. It's Cannon that's usually the much more consistent, stays more even throughout. I think we're seeing that tonight. It's up to Muguruza to really lift again. And a reminder again, Sophia Cannon was down a break in that third set in Beijing and won the set 6-2. Terrific defense there from Sophia. 15 mm -hmm. love. Not sure what she's getting upset there for. Only pushing herself though. A lot of internal dialogue. with generally equals point and Cannon's displaying a fair bit of both. 30 love. Much 
better. Read that one, Muguruza. 159. Stepped in. Played it across her body, so going for the greater margin. Less risk there. And again, trying to work her way back inside the court. Wants to finish the point up near the net. So dangerous off that back inside, so accurate, shaking her head. <laughs> just saying, look how easy that is when I get that backhand deep into her forehand. She's so good to watch. <laughs> she wears her heart on her sleeve. She leaves you in no doubt about what she's thinking at any stage of the match. And what about her preparedness to minimalise her margins and go for the lines? long seemed like time stood still there for a moment <laughs> whilst we waited the, for that ball to land she yes. holds her breath yeah Gavinia holds her breath <laughs> just pushes it long just a couple of feet serve but it feels as though the American has the momentum at this stage it's 2-1 in the deciding set of the final yeah we really are seeing a lot of expressions and emotions from this young lady it's great to see the character isn't it there's a lot of players that are taught just to show no emotion to keep everything very much inside harness your emotions and have the just the routines that just allow you to stay very much in tune with what you're doing but I, I like the fact that she when she's a little upset she just releases that tension and she has an incredible ability to refocus and uh, put the energy back I think it just says S, is that right? With a little diamond at the bottom there. She might be able to afford a big diamond if she wins here. <laughs> Time. 4.12 million. <laughs> it's been an intriguing final for all sorts of reasons. It was intriguing even before a ball was struck. Alexander looking at his daughter, Denara Safina there saying, come on, we can get this done. She's 2-1 up. She's up on her toes. Muguruza again with the pressure of serving from behind. Well, Dad, very animated there. Sophia's dad, Alexander. And, and I have the feeling he's trying to get the message across to Sophia to use the slice, the drop shot more. So really focused on this game just to see whether she brings that into play. Fifteen old. Maybe Gabinia was looking in the wrong coaching box. Just not executed well enough there. Well, that was all started off because of an excellent return of serve and it immediately put the pressure on the Spaniard. Yeah, this is where she's disadvantaged Muguruza once. She's having to work to get back into a neutral position. Struggles. Dad likes it. Beautifully struck backhand.
Coteau. Mugarutha thinks this has got the line. And I think Kennan might be just about sharing that viewpoint now because she's walked. Kennan has one challenge remaining. has been able to do is up the first serve percentage in this third set she's 90 percent of first serves in and look at the emotion now from the spaniard a lot of the emotion has been coming from the other end of the court this final is tense and tight just as all finals should be didn't overplay the smash not an easy shot either Perfect placement, though. <laughs> Gabinia just starting to time the ball a little bit better now. If she was in a bit of a rut at the end of the second set and the start of the third, it seems like she's climbed out of it. A little run of energy yeah. here and okay. consistency from Muguruza. This is what she's been searching for for much of that second set. Couldn't find it. That intensity, sense of purpose and control. For a little while, the Spaniard had nothing to latch on to, but she's got something now. You can see the change in her body language. And now, a huge moment in the deciding set. Three chances to get the first break. Incredibly well today. Depth, she's had her opponent on the defense. And that's what Gabinia has wanted to come out and do tonight. What a point to stop being broken there. And still two more to face. young woman is knee high to a grasshopper five feet seven inches tall but every little inch of it is full of fight no it's incredible isn't it just her ability to be focused under pressure mathematically she can't win 
three points in a row. Okarutha has got to get one of these. You might not see three bigger points played better than that. She's taken the initiative, hasn't she? She's been really consistent and worked the ball, but she's been able to get her opponent on the defence more often, and then she's pulled trigger down the line with really good quality tonight. Under pressure to come up with that kind of play. Three points in a row like that, that's phenomenal. Garbinia has already walked. So she's not full of confidence. This would be one of the biggest holds of this young lady's tennis life, given the circumstances. Magnificent hold of serve, and we are on serve still in the deciding set. That is almost beyond words, that hold of serve. That is crazy. How can Dad sit there? He's got to be just burning up inside. The amount of adrenaline that Sophia Cannon produces after this, it's phenomenal, the ability for her to stay so positive this shot was amazing gets that ball to dip gets muguruza to come forward and then creates the angle and papa absolutely loves it and that's the reaction take that time amazing to see here just the angle the ball dips finds the space opens up the court with the shot before and hits it just with such precision. We might have just seen one of the great backs to the wall games in the Australian Open. Five clean winners, including an ace for Sophia Cannon to somehow get out of that. Fifteen. Fifteen. Well, let's hope that Cabinia is not thinking too much about lost opportunities there. She's got to totally refocus, keep that high number of first serve percentages in.
It's hard to get past her. the crowd, as Louise Fleming said, was on Garbinia's side from the moment they walked onto the court. 19 yeah, shots 19. in the rally, but I think a few of them are starting to waver a little bit because of the performance that Kennan is putting up here. No, it's wonderful, isn't it? She's an absolute fighter, and Garbinia just knows she's got to continue this work rate. Not easy to put this one away when there's not much left in the tank after that long rally. Seven aces. Four to well, that's the only way you can ensure you're going to have a quick point. You know those things we have in parks that a lot of us learned how to play tennis on in Australia. They call brick walls. The ball just keeps coming back. Federer learnt to play on a brick wall. Martina Navratilova did and Muguruza is learning at the moment too what a brick wall feels like. Just so yes. solid when needed, Cannon. It is a massive advantage to be able to stay so mentally even throughout a match. She needs a first serve. And even then it wasn't good enough. A little bit of luck advantage. along the way. And Sophia Cannon now on the verge of a crucial break. Unfortunate way for that game to end, but the momentum well and truly now back with the American. The demons that Gabinia Muguruza must have faced after that fifth game, perhaps residually coming back to haunt her. This young woman is two games away from destiny. Well, that's what you want to do. Down. You want to press. You want to get the first strike in. And that's the pressure that Cannon has brought to her opponent tonight. she got on that ball that was not an easy ball to get over and she had that much spin on it Lou it nearly bounced at right angles no absolutely what a crafty shot here look at this it's a, it's almost like a squash slap when it hit the ground that's not easy for Muguruza and then that just opens up the gap to go cross court and well all she can do is just look on by Muguruza
just the sort of game she was after to back up the break of serve. Both have worked so hard underneath the roof tonight. Well, that work rate that we just saw is the amount of effort required in each rally. And you could see the number was a little better for Cannon. And that's because tonight she's been able to hit the ball down the line and force Muguruza more often to do a lot more defending and running, which is not the game plan that the Spaniard wanted tonight. She couldn't keep on doing it. She just couldn't try as she may. Muguruza eventually overpowers her, but it took a while. Well, she's just totally taken away one of uh, Gabinia's strengths tonight, her ability to come forwards, because when she's come forwards, Cannon's been able to get a deep ball. Unbelievable de defence here. of her lifetime she's producing the performance of her lifetime Sophia Cannon is one game away well I think all the punters tonight Peter thought that the match was going to be played in the hands of Gabinia Muguruza, and I, I feel that just hasn't happened tonight. This young lady, Sophia Kennedy, has come out and she has just produced some very aggressive tennis. And one of the things that she's done extremely well is she's gone down the line faster in the rally than her opponent. First serve percentage is very good there. And that's an area where also Muguruza has just let herself down this last set, though. She's serving incredibly well, good numbers, but it just shows how well Cannon has returned. 24 opportunities she's tried to come forward. That's the number she's wanted to get to, but it just hasn't happened to convert tonight there. Some of the most famous names in the sport are on the Daphne Ackhurst Memorial Trophy. Is the 21-year-old from the United States about to add hers? Magarutha serving to keep the final going. <laughs> On the line. Well, that's almost what she needs to do in this game, Muguruza. Just absolutely take her opponent out of it because at the moment, Cannon's just too good. dearly love to get it done right here without having to go through the agony of serving for the set, the match, the championship. Absolutely. Look at that return, though. That's so confident. 
Well, again, that's the only way she can win a point at the moment. She's got to have almost an unreturnable serve in this young lady. If she gets half a look, she is just swinging. So we've seen a couple of aces. That count is up to nine. The double fault count now is up to six. Kennan has not made a single blemish in that column. And a groan goes up from the crowd as that one misses by a fair margin. And so does that. Well, in the past, it's been a bit of a problem for Muguruza, that second serve, but generally the toss has been too far out in front there. She's just decelerating a little bit, but not getting enough spin on it, and certainly not feeling comfortable tonight on the second serve. Double faults, remember, brought the second set to a close. they may contribute to bringing the championship to a close. A puzzled look on the face of Gabinia Muguruza. She climbed a big mountain in the off-season. But the 21-year-old now, just a single point away from glory. Hit the line. Are you surprised? A second chance to claim the championship. She was a little girl. Sophia Cannon believed that this may be her destiny. And on the Saturday night in Melbourne in 2020, she joins the greats. The 21 year old, born in Moscow, living in the United States, gets it done down under. And the first to be congratulated is the man who's guided her along that path, her dad, Alexander. There's the agent, Hugo Colombini. And of course, the amount of effort and work and the relationship that they have, father and daughter, the days on the court, all of it. I think he turned up to America in the 80s sometime. He, they've said with about $400 in his pocket. So it's been a tough ride for this family. And I'm sure Sophia Cannon will live this moment for a long time. But she, she played the match of her life. What an awful way for it to finish. But you could almost feel that tightening going on in that last game, unfortunately, for Gavinia was said it happened at the end of the second set. It's happened at the end of the third. So Sophia joins Victoria Azarenka and Kim Kleisters as winners of the title after dropping the first set. 
And what a mature performance, winner after winner. I don't think I've ever seen a player from Love 40 down produce a better game in a championship final than she produced in the fifth game of that third set, Luke. Yeah, unbelievable, wasn't it? That was really what changed and started the upward swing for Sophia Cannon to all. And then unbelievably, Love 40, as you said, just played the game of her life, put her up 3-2, and that just started a real sense of confidence for her. She just came out and really was swinging. 28 winners and just 23 unforced errors in that match. Incredibly solid performance from this young lady. Just looked like she was not gonna go away. Amazing, just to look at the numbers. She's one of the 